The RSPCA are currently looking for volunteer drivers. The role requires to handle animals being transported, as well as lifting of creatures of various sizes and weights. And joining me now on the sofa is Gordon, who will tell us more about volunteering with the RSPCA. Well, thank you very much for coming in. And as we, said, we said there, you're, you're a driver, but you, you were a driver in your previous life, and then when you retired, you carried on driving. That's right, that's right. I was a heavy goods driver for nearly 40 years. And I, I do enjoy driving. And that's one of the things you need to do for the, the, the role I do. You need to enjoy driving because you can drive quite long distances sometimes. But I think the main thing is you, you need to be an animal lover. Okay. So um, those are the two main qualities <laughs> or whatever you like to call them that you'd need. Brilliant. And we were talking a little bit earlier that actually you kind of you do travel some distance and yes. kind of back and forth and relay with other drivers around the country. That's right. That's right. I mean, I did one trip if you could call it locally, I picked two border collies up from a foster home in Portsmouth mm. and took them back to their owner in South Wales. Wow. Which was quite a long, that was for pet retreat, which was quite a long trip. And I go up to Birmingham sometimes, across to Kent, down to Devon. So uh, you, you can drive some long distances. So uh, you need to be prepared for that. It's not just popping around to the local vets, <laughs> but, which you do do as well sometimes, but you, you've got to realise that you can be out all day. And you're saying you've got to be an animal lover as well, but you do get some more unusual animals, shall we say, in the back of your van. Yes, I think it's, it, I've been doing this for six and a half years, and in that time I've had um, tarantula spiders, various snakes, lizards, through all the domestic animals, up to sheep and goats and pigs, and wildlife as well. I took um, a baby otter from Taunton. We got wildlife centre at Taunton to a wildlife centre in the New Forest, which was really nice. Oh, wow. It was about two months old, and they were going to keep it there until it was big enough to fend for itself, and then it was going to be released back into the wild, which was that was really, really nice trip. And something like that then, do you kind of keep in touch with the centre to find out how these animals are getting on, or do you try and distance yourself a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I, I just make sure that the animal's OK when I arrive, and then I just carry on, because there's so many animals, you, some of them are so cute, and you think, oh, but you just can't, you'd, you'd be overwhelmed. And you've got centres all around the country. I mean, yes. obviously you've visited probably uh, quite a few of them by now as well so yes. in the six years that you've been doing it. But, yes. I mean, what's, what's been your favourite experience then? Um, favourite experience? That's, I, I had a funny one with a goat. With a goat? Yeah. <laughs> I took, took a billy goat from uh, Stubbington mm -hmm. to a goat sanctuary at Maidstone. Well, it's just outside Maidstone. Big billy goat. And um, it was quite hard to find this place because it's obviously out in the country. And they told me it's down the little lane. So I eventually found the lane, drove down the lane, and saw some goats in a field. I thought, oh, must be getting close, and carried on. And there's nothing. I thought, this is strange. And at the end of this lane, it opened up, and it's like an old manor house, which had been turned into a nightclub. Oh, wow. So I thought, that can't be the Probably not, place. no. <laughs> so um, I turned turned the van round, because we, we have like, like a horse box trailer on the back, mm -hmm. turned it all round, thought, have another look. And as I was turning around, the chap came out of the, the house and said, oh, are you looking for something? I said, I'm looking for this goat sanctuary. He said, you just passed it. I said, really? He said, did you see some goats in the field? I said, yeah. He said, well, there's a, a five bar gate there. He said, if you park by that, go through the gate, walk across the field, and it goes down in a dip, you'll see the house down there. That's, that's that's where the sanctuary is. I thought, oh. So I did that, walked down, found the lady that was running the place. And she said, oh, you've brought my goat? I said, yes. She said, where is it? And I could just about see the trailer. <laughs> I think, she said, oh, that's good. That's where we want to put him. So off we went, opened the trailer up, got him into the field. And I, we shut the gate. And once he, he was standing there looking around, and all the other goats started coming towards us. I thought, oh, dear. So I said to this lady, is it going to be all right? She said, oh, it'll be fine, fine. And we dealt with the paperwork, because you get DEFRA paperwork for animal movements, you have to fill in, so. and adoption papers. So um, while we were doing that, all these other goats, and they all standing looking at him. Curious things. Yeah, and this billy goat looked very important, and just sort of standing there looking round. So I said, are you sure? He'd be he said, it'll be absolutely fine. So I said, OK. So off she went, and I went back to the van. I thought, I'll just stay for a few minutes, and make sure everything's okay. After about 10 minutes, this big billy goat sort of looked round and started trotting round the field. 
and all the other ones started following around like Pied Piper. <laughs> I thought, well, he's obviously the leader of the herd So he already. settled in quite yeah. nicely then. And he looked really, really pleased with himself and really important looking. <laughs> and, then, and off he went. And I thought, oh, well, he's obviously fell on his hooves. So uh, that was quite nice. That's Excellent. quite a nice one, yeah. And we heard there say that you're obviously used to driving, so that's yes. why you volunteered and became a driver, but yes. there are plenty of other opportunities for volunteering as well, and if somebody at home wanted to get involved, how would they go about doing that? Um, well, if you go onto the RSPCA main website, there is a section you can click on that says volunteering, mm -hmm. and then it, there'll, there'll be a box where you can put your postcode in, and there's also a drop-down box with various roles of volunteering you can do all sorts in, in the in the animal centres, um, home visiting. There's lots of various roles working as, as charity shops. So you, you can put your postcode in and then it'll, it'll come up what's available in your area and then it'll obviously tell you from there how to apply if there's anything you fancy. And what would the ideal sort of volunteer driver look like? Do you necessarily have to have driving experience? No, no, but you need to enjoy driving and, and realise that you could be out a whole day, mm -hmm. not just half an hour so and obviously have a driving license as well yes you need, you need a full driving license be over 21 mm -hmm. and all the vehicles are manual transmission so if you've only got a license for an automatic vehicle unfortunately well maybe it's an incentive for some people to go out and get the full license well yeah <laughs> anyway i'm afraid that's all the time we've got for now thank you very much for coming in i've loved Pleasure. some of your stories thank you thank you